The best value B550 motherboard just got a whole lot better. What up fam, welcome back to 88-Bit Tech. I'm AJ and today we're taking a look at the Soyo B550M ARGB. Now when this first released, the ARGB headers didn't work. They would power, but you couldn't control them through software. I tried everything from open RGB, signal RGB to every single RGB software from every uh, manufacturer and none of it would work. However, Soyo has released a BIOS update and ARGB software to control the uh, ARGB on their motherboards and it works. And this is a feature packed board that you can get delivered for 52 US dollars when it's on sale. That's the lowest I've seen it go. It has a slot to be able to include a Wi-Fi card that costs like six AUD on AliExpress. And if you add that to the total, that ends up being $55.82 delivered for a motherboard that can support pretty much all AM4 CPUs, includes Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and has M2 M.2 slots. Pretty feature packed. And so if you're not familiar with the Soyo brand, they've been around for ages. They were uh, defunct. They went bankrupt in 2009, but Maxon purchased their name and started producing PC components under Maxon and Soyo. I would say their Maxon line is their more supported line. They produce graphics cards and, and uh, motherboards and have regular BIOS updates. Their Soyo one is where they produce more budget-friendly options that are have less support, but not zero support because obviously, as you can see in the title of this video, it is this is a Soyo B550M ARGB BIOS update video. But very quickly, let's go over the specifications of this motherboard. You can see supports, I've tested this personally with the Ryzen 7 5800X and it works absolutely fine, didn't skip a beat. I've seen other YouTubers test it with Ryzen 7 5700X 3D and had no issues there at all. Sometimes RAM can be a bit finicky, but generally speaking, I, I have had very little issues getting RAM working on this motherboard at the full rated speeds. It doesn't come with a battery, so make sure you get that if you decide to pick this board up. And the PCI Wi-Fi is really the only thing in on the listings that I find annoying from Soyo and the AliExpress sellers. I wish they would have a list of all the cards that will work because I went through three before I found one that actually worked on this motherboard. And I'll link that in the description as well does have two M.2 slots, and what's surprising is the first one does support NGFF, and the second one supports M.2 SATA, which is crazy because you don't typically see that type of compatibility with motherboards, especially at this value. Uh, the X16 slot is PCI 4.0, so you're going to get full usage out of that. does have an additional PCI 3.0 X1 slot if you wanted to add additional modules, and there's the three pin ARGB headers that if you don't update your board, it will only work to light up your fans and whatever other uh, ARGB peripherals you have in their standard color configuration you can't change. But now you can. On the back of your Soyo B550M, you do get a substantial amount of I.O. with four USB 3.0 ports as well as four USB 2.0 ports. Not to mention HDMI and VGA connections as well. And then this area here is where your Wi-Fi is going to go. So the tricky part is the the BIOS for this is on a Chinese website and they're a bit difficult to get. So let's just go. So you E550M ARGB or BIOS update. So website is in Chinese. You can go ahead and translate it. But be sure that you don't get the wrong one. So this, uh, their, the B, the SY Yanlong B550M, this is for the black one that doesn't have ARGB. Do not install this version onto your ARGB one. You could potentially brick your motherboard. What you want to do is go to AMD series on the side here. And you'll find at the top is their latest update to the B550M ARGB. You'll have two options here to download. The website is tricky. 
To get this a download is quite difficult. So what I've done for you guys, I've uploaded it to a Google Drive and I'll put that link in the description. And then you can go there to download the software and the BIOS update. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So it'll you click on the link, it'll take you to this folder. You'll have the ARGB software. So you can go ahead and click that, click that, and go ahead and click download. It's going to scan, it's going to say whether or not you actually want to do this, but um, I've already clicked that it's fine. Yeah, so download anyway could be dangerous. It's not dangerous. I've, I've already checked it. It's literally just ARGB software. So download that and go back to the Soyo files. I put some instructions in here as well. So just copy EFI folder into a formatted USB drive. That's all you have to do. So just download this. It's going to prepare it as a zip file. So you're going to need something to unzip it. And the file is ready. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. You want to extract all. Now, just copy this into a USB drive. So first off, you're going to want to format that drive. So I already have some BIOS in there, but we'll redo the whole process. So format, say start. So keep in mind that the files for the, um, the BIOS are only like 20 megabytes. So you don't need that big of a USB drive. As long as the USB drive has more than 20 megabytes, uh, so let's let's say 25 just to be safe. You're gonna be fine. Okay. So now that we have formatted that drive, all you gotta do is paste this into there. That's it. You can shut off your computer. Presumably, you're doing this on your motherboard, so you'll have this uh, plugged into your um, your B550M ARGB motherboard. You're gonna want to remove all storage drives from your Soyo B550M ARGB. I'm not sure why Maxon and Soyo require this, uh, but it says to do it, so that's what I do. So unplug any M.2 as well as any SATA or HDDs that you may have plugged in. So we remove the M.2 NVMe SSD on my test bench here, and we do have the BIOS USB plugged in. So I have a curved monitor. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the computer. Hit the F11 key until we're in the, the boot device screen. You can see we only have that BIOS. So just double click that. So it's going to run through this program to update the BIOS. As you can see, we do have AB5N1002. That is the BIOS that we're updating to. It's going to take a couple of minutes, but just let it run. All right, and that's it. You can see process completed here at the bottom. Once that's done, so what you're going to want to do is unplug your USB from the computer. So we've removed, so we've removed the USB stick. Next thing you're going to want to do is Control Alt Delete and it'll restart the computer. It's going to reset all your previous BIOS settings. So I'm going to take you through all the things that I usually do for um, the BIOS on here to optimize it. OK, so it's restarting now. Oh, and I should have pressed delete. And now I have to. All right. So what you're going to want to you know, just turn manually turn it off. But I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the SSD here. Let's go to system information. We are now on version 1.0. Let's see if we can restart it and if we can get into the BIOS now. Should be entering recovery mode here. Go to troubleshoot, advanced. So going into the UFEI, boom. All right, so we're finally in, we're finally back into the BIOS here. So first things first is change this to English. And then the next thing I do is I disable CSM because this can cause issues with your RAM. Go to secure boot. 
it's disabled right now. Set this to enabled. Do custom. Change it back to standard. It's going to ask you uh, to install factor defaults. Press yes to confirm. Hit yes. Save configuration reset. Hit no. And then boom, active. So that's good to go. Next thing you're going to want to do is go to PCIe subsystem. Above 4G decoding, enable that, enable resizable bar, set it to auto. And then you can do the memory overclock. So set this to manual, XMP profile one. So my specific one doesn't have any XMP, so I have to do this manually. But set this to 1.35, 3200, ZL16. If your if your your RAM has uh, XMP settings, it should populate correctly. I have to do this manually on my own, but generally speaking, it should be fine. So there we go. Set all of that fine. Next up, I usually do this for all my AM4 CPUs. I do go to overclocking. I go to precision boost overdrive. So this has a Ryzen 5 5600X in it. Set this to advanced. So I'm going to do an overclock and an undervolt to lower temperatures and improve clock speed. So for curve optimizer, set this to all core negative 20. You can play around with this value, but 20 is generally going to be a safe bet. It's going to work with pretty much all AM4 CPUs. Uh, boost clock override, set that to positive 200. So it's going to add another additional 200 megahertz to your timings. And I also like to add a thermal limit of 85 degrees. I don't like seeing my CPU go above that. And then basically what will happen is if it gets to that level and it's going to go above it, it's going to downclock in order to stay under 85. But generally speaking, if you have a decent cooler, then you should be completely fine. And that is it for my configurations. Mm, yep, so secure boot is enabled. Just save changes and reset. And we're back in and you'll we'll be able to see that my timings are reflected correctly on my RAM. Uh, resizable bars enabled. Okay, so I plugged in an ARGB fan here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and run the ARGB software. You can change the language in the top right corner. Go to the settings, drop down, change it to English, and then that left button here. And there you go. So let's see if we can change the color on this. Yep. You can increase the speed, the brightness. Change the color. Yeah, there you go. It's fully working now. There you have it. The Soyo B550M ARGB is now an actual ARGB motherboard. Uh, it does work and its value has only inc increased exponentially. I don't know how this will affect the price, but I have, like I said, I have seen this go as low as 80 AUD delivered or, or like just below 52 USD delivered brand new um, exceptional value motherboard for and it's a B550 so it's like the top spec I mean it's not B570 level but it's essentially will handle everything that you need to do um, 
apart from Ryzen 9. I can't speak for Ryzen 9 because I haven't tested it out myself specifically, but Ryzen 7 seems to work fine on this motherboard. So, and if you're just gaming, that's really all you need. Just some troubleshooting things. So after you press Control Alt Delete and uh, it should boot loop a couple of times. And if you press the leak key, it should take you back into the BIOS. I've updated two other motherboards of this one that I have, uh, and it worked that way. This was the only one that was a bit strange. It didn't boot back into BIOS, it wouldn't boot, boot, boot back into BIOS. So I had to reinstall the SSD and have it boot to Windows and then boot to recovery mode and select UEIF settings from there in order to uh, get... Um, get into the BIOS. But then once I was in the BIOS, everything worked like normal. And then I was able after that, I was able to re-enter the BIOS like normal by pressing the delete key. And I did check the timings. I updated the timings again. And uh, the bank cycle time did actually report correctly on CPU Z. So everything is good on there. I'm actually running a test right now in OCCT just to make sure that the memory is still after BIOS update that the memory is still um, completely compatible and there aren't any errors or issues with that. But so far, no errors. So, and it's in the other two systems that I've already done this before, there were no errors on the CPU or the RAM. So there you have it. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, I would greatly appreciate a subscribe and a like and a comment because it'll go a long way in helping me make more content like this for you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.